Pac-Man's Hydrogen is one of his best tools in neutral. It has a wide variety of different uses as is a projectile, but also a stage hazard. It's a very powerful and underutilized conditioning tool that Pac-Man has in his arsenal. This video will go over how and when to use Hydrant in the neutral, as well as how to use it to make reads. As reference, I won't really be talking about using Hydrant for landing, offstage stalling, or edge guarding, as well being great uses for Hydrant as well, those are more self-explanatory. The focus of this video will be more on how Hydrant can be utilized to your advantage in the neutral. First things first, it's important that we know the attributes of Hydrant before we discuss how to use it. Hydrant is a special move, meaning it can be used on the ground and in the air. Pac-Man drops a Hydrant below him that has a hitbox until it hits the ground. Once it lands, it will spurt water out twice, either from the top or at the sides depending on where Pac is standing, and then disappear. The move comes out in frame 12 on the ground and frame 9 in the air. Despite this, it's always faster to use Hydrant on the ground since it takes Pac-Man 5 frames to get into the air due to jump squat. The most important mechanic that you need to understand with Hydrant is that it has 13 HP and will launch once it takes that much damage. Additionally, different moves launch Hydrant in different directions, usually based on the knockback angle of the attack. This is crucial to Pac-Man's neutral plan with Hydrant, and it's the basis of a lot of Hydrant setups that Pac-Man has. Now let's get into how Hydrant helps Pac-Man in the neutral. Keep in mind first that neutral can be played in a variety of different ways by different people. What I'm going to be explaining here is simply how I approach playing neutral with Hydrant and what I find to be the most effective, and what you find to be the most effective may be different from what I say. However, the concepts I'll be explaining in this part are still very useful to keep in mind. First things first, once you know the character you're fighting against, think about what options they have for breaking Hydrant. The best tools for this are safe, low committal attacks that will break it in one hit, like Ike's Backer for example. These types of moves are kind of annoying since there isn't much Pac can do to punish them. However, there are ways you can try to stop your opponent from using these options. For one, if the attack in question is 13 or 14 percent, it will stale after your opponent hits you with it once and no longer be able to one-shot Hydrant. This is incredibly useful against characters like Cloud and Greninja, since their Hydrant breaking attacks, being bare and fair respectively, are very important to the neutral games. Second, if your opponent's best move for breaking Hydrant is an aerial that they have to land with in order to connect, you can always just place a trampoline in front of Hydrant to prevent them from being able to space it properly. This can be punishable if your opponent reads it, however it's quite a good way to catch your opponent off guard and make them play neutral at your pace. After you've dealt with these types of moves, there are typically three different ways your opponent will play around Hydrant. The first is simply running at the Hydrant and hitting it with a smash attack. While this method of dealing with Hydrant gets rid of Hydrant immediately, it's quite easy to punish if you're nearby. Generally, you want to be at a distance from Hydrant where you're able to whiff punish the move rather than shielding it, since a smash attack combined with the Hydrant will do a ton of shield pressure and make it hard to land out of shield punish. You also have to keep track of what angle that attack launches Hydrant at, since if you're not careful, you could still potentially get hit by it. The next method is to use several weaker attacks to break Hydrant. This is also quite punishable, however there are many more layers of depth to these interactions with Hydrant. If your opponent hits Hydrant with an attack that doesn't initially break it, you can throw out an attack of your own at the Hydrant, which will do a lot of damage since it will get hit by your attack but also the Hydrant itself. Fruits like Galaxian are very good at this too, since you can punish your opponent from a distance or rack up crazy amounts of damage from a Galaxian combo. There are some characters that are forced to use this option whenever they want to get rid of Hydrant. Sheik, for instance, has a fairly low damage kit and doesn't have any attacks that can conveniently one-shot Hydrant. Additionally, zoners like Robin are also forced to do this since Hydrant blocks their projectiles. Keep in mind, however, that your opponent can also use this against you. Pax Kid actually isn't the best for breaking Hydrant himself, so sometimes your opponent can wait for you to hit it and then launch the Hydrant with an attack of their own back at you. The third method, and the most effective one, is to simply not hit the Hydrant. This may sound counterintuitive, but it's actually a decent way to counter Hydrant. A lot of players who are more experienced in the matchup will take a more patient approach to Hydrant and choose to ignore it and only hit it in situations where you put yourself in a bad spot by hitting Hydrant, or when you're in a position where you can't reach Hydrant before they launch it. While the wire that stays out can disrupt their combos and microspacings in neutral, it's by far the safest way to play around Hydrant. However, that doesn't mean there's nothing Pat can do about it. If your opponent is using a more passive playstyle like this, it's a lot safer to use Hydrant for your own zoning since you're less at risk of getting hit. I intentionally left out how Pat can launch the Hydrant himself until this part of the video, since it makes the most sense to talk about it here. Pac-Man has a lot of different angles that he can launch Hydrant at, and combinations for damaging Hydrant, however I'm going to be covering the most useful here. First off, the only moves that Pac has that one-shot the Hydrant are Forward Smash, Down Smash, and Key. It's important to note that Back Air does 12%, which means you can launch Hydrant with any move you want after you bear it. Up Air is also a very good move to run off and hit Hydrant with since it does 10% in auto cancels, letting you act very quickly after using it. Fair can also be good since it's so fast and has good combinations into other moves, like Nair and Up Air. 
Forward tilt, down tilt, forward smash, nair, and key all launch the hydrant at a fairly standard horizontal angle. That's good for general zoning. Jab kind of has hydrant tumble on the spot while retaining a hitbox, which gives you space to charge fruit. Speaking of fruit, if you want to get it into your hand, you can run off and bear in the hydrant and then turn around and fruit, which lets you protect yourself from your opponent while you catch the projectile. This is also a very good way to stuff out approaches and then do massive amounts of damage with Galaxian. Lastly, launching Hydrant with Fair sends it at a similar angle to the first one I mentioned, however it moves quite slowly which makes it fantastic for baiting out rolls and then punishing them with a smash attack. Keep in mind that if you're being predictable, your opponent can always do the second method and hit Hydrant after you to punish you, so be careful. Overall, Hydrant is very effective as a baiting and conditioning tool in neutral. You're able to receive a ton of information about your opponent off of how they deal with Hydrant and adapt to how you're countering it. As always, remember not to be predictable and mix up how you punish your opponent, as they can start to make reads on you if you're always doing the same thing to punish them. However, once you start downloading your opponent and conditioning them to break Hydrant in different ways, it's a lot easier to always be three steps ahead of them in battle. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more competitive Smash content. I have a very big project in the works, so uploads may be a little bit more infrequent in the coming months. I also have a side series plans for when we get more information on Smash for the Switch. If you have any other video ideas, be sure to mention them in the comments. Until then, I'll see you all next time.